Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to my weekly wrap up for week 16. So since this week was Tor.comathon, I focused more on the novellas for that, and less on my magical readathon TBR, as you are going to see. But the first thing I finished this week was actually the novelette Emit by Lauren Ring, or this is one of the Nebula nominations, and I'll have it linked down below. The link is to Lauren Ring's website, and it, it does state that this is only going to be temporary on her website, and it's for nomination purposes to make it easier for people to read instead of having to go out and buy the science fiction fantasy magazine. And this follows Chea, who is a computer programmer with a facial recognition firm. Her conflict is she gets to work from home, which is a more cushy position to work from. But what her company is doing is she doesn't think is right. And it intercuts with flashbacks from her childhood where you see that Che is really someone who wants to do the right thing, the just thing, and not just sit and let things happen. And she has to decide how much of a stand is she willing to take, even if that might jeopardize her career. And it was really well done. I enjoyed it. And then I finished Sisters of the Vast Black by Lena Rather. And this is a space opera novella published by Tor.com. You're following a group of Catholic nuns. Their mission is to go out and do good, help people in need, and you follow a few different perspectives, which I hadn't been expecting. I'm trying to think of what I can say to keep this non-spoilery. I think that this could have worked actually really well as a novel. It worked for me as a novella, but I think it would have been better as a novel, just to give it some more depth a novel would have helped us to see more of the universe because they would have had to have added touches and other locations, other places. And also one of the characters makes a decision, but you see her at the end of making the decision. So when she makes it, you, you don't really have a, you don't really care that she made it and it was a hard decision for her because you weren't connected with her for enough time. Did that make sense? Overall, I did enjoy this, and I know that it, a sequel has come out this year, which is why I wanted to get to this, so I could read the sequel, and I will be reading the sequel. The next I read, Flowers of the Sea by Zen Rocklin, and this is a dystopian fantasy. Yeah, more fantasy than I would say science fiction. I did not connect very well with this one at all. I'm going to say the main character is unreliable. We're seeing everything through her perspective, but she has leaned very heavily into her anger and her generational trauma to the point where when people are nice to her, she cannot be nice back, which then poisons any possible relationship. And then people revert to what she like their worst selves with her because that is what she's pushing them to do. And she doesn't realize that she is part of the problem for her relationships. She sees everyone else as against her. And so this book starts off where the main character is pregnant and she doesn't want to be pregnant. But through the course of the book as she talks about it, she wasn't raped. She wasn't forced to have sex. And I find myself not having a lot of sympathy for not wanting to be pregnant when you had sex willingly. And I get this. It's not my experience. I mean, living on an ark when the world is all water isn't anyone's lived experience. I think it really comes back down to the main character in this book is extremely angry. And 15 years ago, I would have connected with that. I was a much more angry person at that time. And so I would have connected, I think, better with the, the main character than I do now. 
no afterlife experience, my anger has dampened and yeah, I still see the injustices that are around me, but I also realize that I alone cannot change the big ones. I have to work on the ones that are in front of me. I can't change what Congress does, but I can change how my local government approaches things. I, I think this is going to work for a lot of people if you're still in the mindset of there's all these injustices going about and they're wrong and we're angry about them, then yes, you're going to connect with the main character. I also call her an unreliable main character because in her flashbacks she'll say, oh, this happened and this happened. And then at the very end, as she's given her full memory, you see that you can see that the anger at her, at her past lover is not 100% merited. Like she yells at him and says, oh, you denied me. And then we see that he was restrained. Things as she's remembering it isn't necessarily how it actually happened. It was interesting. Uh, it was one of the Nebula nominations, which is another reason why I was interested in reading it. And it's a tour.com and it fit the creature prompt with the tentacles on the book. So for final thoughts of this, I think this came out in October of 2021, which would be then within my year for a full review. I'm going to have to think about it a lot longer to see what do I actually have to say and is what I have to say worth making a video for because I don't want people to think negatively of this book. It didn't connect with me. It didn't work with me, but I, it's going to work for a lot of people. And the writing in this is beautiful. It's very lyrical. And those are the things that I finished this past week. This past week felt very busy for me, but I am almost done with In the Watchful City by S. Liu. This is an interesting book. It's not what I thought when I was picking it up from the description. But I'm not disappointed with it, and I will have more thoughts for this next week once I finish it. So I guess this is kind of going into my next week TBR. I'm finishing it, probably this weekend, because I'm filming this on Saturday. And then I made Further Progress in Root Magic by Eden Royce. I'm about halfway through, because you can't really tell. Yeah, there we are, halfway through. And I am enjoying this so much. This is a really, really good middle grade to give kids. I especially love that the kids, while they solve many things themselves, and they even it even has a statement where her, the twins are like, we have this policy that if we can't solve it ourselves, then we go to an adult. And it's nice to see that the adults are present and actually care. There's one instance where Jezebel, the main character, is having an issue at school and comes home and she just makes a simple statement and her mom freaks out, but she hadn't given her mother all the context of what was actually happening. So then later her uncle finds her and he just approaches her a little bit differently and she tells him, hey, this is what's going on. And I'm pretty sure he shared that with her mom later because then her mom was like, okay, but you still have to go to school. <laughs> so yeah. And then she also got a little more context and her parent, like her mother and why her mother has these opinions and makes these decisions for the family. It's, I'm loving it. This is great. Didn't read any more of this this week, but going to be continuing and finishing this off. Editor here. I realized I forgot to say that I started rereading The Viscount Who Loved Me, which is the second book in the Bridgerton series. After watching the second season of Bridgerton, I'm, the things that I felt like the book did better, I also realized I should go back and reread the book to actually verify that I thought that the book did that better. I was really enjoying that until my Hoopla app all of a sudden went stupid. So I'm waiting for them to get that problem fixed. Still need to work on this this next week as well. So with luck, I will finish these two this weekend. And then we'll focus on these two this next week. And if by some miracle I finish that, then I'll start reading Little Women. And then later this week, you should see my... If it isn't out before this video, it might be out before this video. But I am going to be participating in May of the Modern, so I will have my May TBR posted 
shortly. I just have to go to the library and pick up the books that are ready because it's more fun to hold the book up. And then for my writing wrap up, I'm continuing to pants my way through. <laughs> I'm just kind of finding out what is going on in these characters' heads, kind of the rhythm. I, so I'd started off going like one chapter's Maeve, one chapter's Leo, and I've gotten to the point where some like a scene will happen with Leo and then I'm like, okay, this would be an interesting scene to happen with Maeve, but I'm still like in Leo's chapter and I'm like, how do I work this? So when I get to Maeve, it's like time hasn't passed too far for that scene to happen. I mean, that's right now the structure of how I'm writing it for my zero draft, but when I go back and edit it for the first draft, those scenes can be changed up. It might not be one character, one chapter, one character, another chapter. For me, the zero draft is about just getting the story down. And then first draft is kind of more figuring out what structure do I want this to be? And that's where many times I'll change the tense or yeah, throw in flashbacks, get more detailed and setting things up for later. So I'm zero drafting and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And for other media, I think the thing that has really stuck out with me the most was actually, I just finished the podcast yesterday, but it's one of the NASA podcasts, but in this case, the host was interviewing Catherine Walker, who studies climate change, specifically ice, and how, and I liked that she broke it down, she goes, there's just a lot of things we don't know, but the things we do are pretty cool, and it was a fun episode to listen to. As I've gotten older, I always wish that I would have taken more science classes, but science isn't my forte, or never has been my forte. It, science is one of those classes for me that I love the knowledge, I love the learning, but don't ask me to try to do a grade. So that has been my week, 16. It's been a fun one.